This is uh, part B of the understanding your financial statement at Erickson University, and we're going to be focusing on the second statement that you receive at the end, the month at the end of every quarter, uh, which is titled on this first slide, the Matson Money Client Statement. And this statement, the, the underlying numbers will be exactly the same as the Trust Company of America custodian statement that we talked about in Part A, but it provides additional data and, uh, and more information. So if you look on page two or page, uh, the second slide, uh, you're always going to see a um, kind of an editorial uh, message from our co-advisor at Matson Money. Generally, this is written by Mark Matson himself uh, with contributions from all of us. Um, but uh, this is uh, a, kind of a state of the union for that particular time frame. Um, and then to the right of that, this is kind of an important thing. It looks a little bit confusing because you see lots of different um, indexes. But um, what I wanted to show you was is you'll see... This answers the question of how we benchmark ourselves for uh, success. Um, and this is what we're looking at for benchmarking to see how we're doing against uh, the stated asset classes that we're trying to mirror. And so, for instance, if you look under the U.S. section, uh, U.S. equity section on the right in that subcategory, those are all um, uh, indexes of various asset classes of U.S. equities or U.S. stocks. And the first one you'll see, for instance, is index Russell 2500, um, and that's uh, that's an index of uh, U.S. 20, of 2500 Russell index stocks. And then you'll see to below that is the free market U.S. equity fund. That is the second one is your key fund because that is your fund and that is the gross returns in that fund um, for for this time period, which is uh, for the year. And you can see. Um, then below that, you're going to see other indexes, such as the uh, index S&P 500 index, and then you'll see the DFA, U.S. Large Company Index. And so what, what's happening there is that, um, uh, just remember this, the first number where it just says index, that's kind, of, uh, that's kind of an overall benchmark that we're comparing ourselves to. And so the second one where you see uh, free market U.S. equity fund, that's how we did against the, the benchmark before that. So then if you see like the index S&P 500 index at 32.39%, then you see the DFA U.S. Large Company index at 32.33%. The, 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 that DFA is the respective large company portfolio in your, built into that free market U.S. fund, and we're comparing the, that specific part of the portfolio to the S&P 500 index fund. All the way down the line, you'll see the index first, like Russell 1000 value, and then you'll see the DFA U.S. Large value, and that's how we... We, you know, we outperformed that index by a significant amount, but that's who we're comparing it to. I hope that makes sense, and I'd be happy to explain it to you in a, in a, in a personal conversation or email if it doesn't quite make sense. But just remember that we try to find an appropriate index. Uh, we list that first, and then below that, you're going to see the how the specific parts of the portfolio uh, for DF, the DFA funds uh, are, are, are comparing themselves to that index. If you go down to international equity, it's the same thing. We're showing you an overall MCSI World Index, excluding the U.S., at 21.02. And then your actual fund that has all your international funds is called the Free Market International Equity Fund, and that did 21.8. Oh, so we are actually outperforming our benchmark, so we're you know, doing well. Um, and then and then, going, then below that, in, in international, those are the various components that make up uh, the, uh, the overall um, the overall uh, international equity fund index. Same thing down in the um, fixed income fund. Uh, this one's a little trickier because there's not a, there's not really a good overall index that for we to compare it to. So for this one, we show the City Group World Government Bond Index Fund, which should probably, in my mind, isn't the most appropriate one. But there just isn't really a good one to measure with. Uh, but you can kind of see like the the longer the time period you have, like for instance, the, the inflation at the bottom, the, the intermediate government fixed income fund had a negative return of 3.52, and the DFA inflation protected securities, 9.27. Those are certain indexes of certain types of uh, of uh, index funds. Overall, though, our free market fixed fund outperformed those indexes, but uh, that one's a little tougher because there's not really a good overall benchmark to measure it against. But just, just the, but you can kind of see with that return, you can, it gives you kind of a flavor that we are we are focusing on short-term fixed income type instruments, and so we were able to minimize the volatility of that portfolio. So if that makes sense, great. If not, I'd be happy to explain it further. 
But this is where we start the, the, the basis of evaluating how your, well your portfolio is doing against your respective benchmarks. Sometimes, unfortunately, there isn't really a good benchmark uh, to control, compare it to, so you won't, you won't always see an index to compare it to. Uh, that's okay, because that just means that you have more diversification than the comparable indexes. The next slide, you'll see uh, a summary of your account um, for the period and then uh, the ending balance. And this will be broken out um, from as from for all the accounts uh, combined. And so, so I previously, when we looked at the Trust Company of America statement for this specific client, uh, we only were focused on the IRA, but this one also includes a joint account. So that's why the numbers look a little bit different and a larger. Um, that's okay. Um, it's the same idea. The only difference here is that we're showing you a little bit more long-term history. For instance, we're showing you in the uh, left column, of course, the, the previous quarter activity, we're, we're showing a summary of the withdrawals, the additions, and the gain and loss, and the any balance. We're also showing the year to date, just like the last statement, uh, but we're also showing since inception, and that's that's kind of interesting because that'll show you what's happened for the whole history of your account since since inception. And then the little pie chart to the right is a very broad breakdown of the U.S. equity stocks the fixed income equity stocks and the international equity stocks. So the breakdown by, by graphical look and then also by um, the, uh, the uh, uh, number, actual numbers at the bottom. Above that where it says your investor coach, it has my name and it has the address and phone number. If you can't ever remember my phone number, that's how you can track me down and find me. So I can talk about your statement personally. Next statement is a little bit more detail about uh, the breakdown again. This 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 is breaking it down by the free market funds that I mixed. I talked about before, so you actually can see that how much you have in the free market fixed income fund, the FDIC cash reserves, the free market U.S. equity fund, and the free market international equity fund in dollars, and that's all that uh, we're talking about here. And you can see that, uh, um, and then this is starting to break it down back to by account type. So this is going back to those IRA numbers that matches up to the previous statement exactly. If it's off a penny, that's a problem because these statements need to match exactly. Next page is uh, a much more comprehensive and detailed analysis of that overall previous pie chart we showed you a couple pages before. This actually shows you ex exactly in depth about your current asset class target allocations uh, for all of your portfolio. And, and so you can see it's a much more comprehensive and and, and, and uh, uh, Detailed portfolio with, with uh, 19 different asset categories, and then and then uh, down below we kind of break it down by color again. But but you can see to the right it shows your global exposure to different types of country, the different countries, and whether they're developed countries or emerging markets. And then it also uh, breaks down. Uh, this is this is a very good important information about asset category target allocations, or we're talking about where you're at currently uh, compared to the target. So. For instance, you'll see that the target is 40.051% for your overall fixed income, while well, actually it was um, 38.951. So that's an indication that we're, we, because of the market conditions improving, going so, up, so much up for equities, that we may need to rebalance your portfolio. You can see the domestic U.S. equity as 33.975 as a target, but it's actually just now showing 35.397, so it's outperformed the target. So that's an indication that we're going to we're going to need to rebalance uh, to get it back to target, and then of course the international equity is also a little bit different, actually a little closer. But overall, we are going to do a rebalancing back to target, um, but it won't show up until your next statement because we're going to do this in the month after the end of the statement. So you won't see the rebalancing activity until the next month. Okay, next page, uh, we give a detailed uh, breakdown about how our fees were calculated based on the account balance. The key about this is we always are building arrears, and what that means is is that we are using the. Uh, this will actually show the fee schedule for uh, the bill that's going to be billed in January for December. And so this, so if you looked at your previous quarter statement, you would see the billing for, uh, as of September 30th, and that will actually show up as part of your costs in the current quarter. So we're always building in arrears, and so what this is is the calculation. Of how, how much we're going to bill the client for the uh, for the next month for this current quarter because we're again we're always building arrears. To the right, we're showing um, expense ratios for the different 
average income, uh, average uh, types of funds by, based on Morningstar. Uh, there's some that are higher, there's some that are lower, uh, all the way down to international. And the thing that's very exciting for me is that our overall expense ratio will is continuing to go down in the last five years and um, will continue to go down. Um, we have nearly five billion of assets under management in this in these portfolios that you're involved with. And the more that we keep that keep getting added, um, that's going to allow for the expense ratio to continually go down. Uh, so we're very excited that these expense ratios um, will are going down and will continue to go down. Uh, so overall, that's that's a uh, that's the information that you're getting in the mats and money statements. Again, if you have any questions and a little more specifics that you want to understand, I'm happy to answer those personally for you. Uh, but thank you very much for watching this episode of Erickson University.